How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Good, how are you doing? How you doing? Bless, real bless. Real bless. Questions? Uh, Dante, how do you uh, how are you feeling about the defense and what do you think is gonna be a little different this year than maybe it was last year and what we saw for that uh, I've got a really great feeling about this uh, defense. Uh, I say what I feel is most different is that that level of intensity. Um, I feel like now it's, it's raised to a, a whole nother level. Like we're happy about what we did last year, but that's not enough right now. So we kind of just been elevating that standard. How are you looking to apply that theme of good to great in, in your own personal game in your life? Um, just really uh, learn from the mistakes I've already made. Um, these last couple of seasons, uh, making those mistakes and learning from them and looking back at them and kind of learning from them and playing it uh, differently, I guess. Um, but just being able to elevate my game. What are, what are maybe some of those lessons you and, and the defensive backs learned last year that you're trying to apply this year? Um, I would say me personally is just um, winning on my leverage, um, playing the call when we play the call, um, not getting too much in my head about what I'm doing and just do what I got to do. Yeah, as you've gotten further in your career, how has your ability to self-improve improved? Or self-evaluate, um, excuse me. I say it's uh, improved a lot. I say my freshman year, I really wasn't going back and watching myself and my, watching myself and seeing uh, like where I need to correct myself or anything like that. But now it's like a, it's almost a have to, like I have to see what I'm doing wrong. I have to see what, what I'm doing right, you know? Dante, you're gonna be seeing a familiar face week two in Tyler, you were on that team the, the COVID year. What, is, is it gonna be weird kind of seeing him on the other sideline then up against him? <sighs> Not really. Uh, Tyler, my boy, you feel me? Uh, yeah. You know, when I was first here, he was the quarterback for uh, Oregon. So it's nothing but a, you know, a little rematch, a little family reunion. That's all it is. What's good, Danny? What's good, Rich? I'll ask you the question I asked you last year, too. But like, are there guys or position groups that have stood out through summer that you think are maybe going to, I don't want to say surprise people, but maybe that'll excite people when they see them on Saturday? Yeah, I'm going to say um, our uh, defensive back group is crazy. Um, I'll say our D-line is crazy, too. Um, we got a lot of new faces. Um, I'm not even gonna name them, but just know we got a lot of new faces that y'all gonna love to see, love to see. With the portal and just how easy it is for people to move around, does that get daunting at all when you're looking to maybe a, a year where you can break out of just players being added and trying to kind of manage the, all of that? Uh, not really. Uh, I feel like the, the transfer portal just adds, you know, that more level of competition to those guys who's hungry to, you know, go out and play. Um, not, you, you never want to shy away from competition and it's only gonna get better. Uh, the more people you bring in. So just being able to compete at the highest level, you know, is going to get you prepared for the highest level. Thanks. Sure. How did you see Coach Laning change over last year? Where do you think you're going to see something different this year? Um, I say uh, Coach Laning, I've seen like a, a, a level of like, how should I put it? He was happy about what we did last year, but like nowhere was that ever good to him. Like, you know, he came from a, a national championship team and, and things like that. So he knows what it looks like, what it sounds like, you know. So, you know, he wasn't happy about where we ended last year, but he, he wasn't, you know, mad about it either. I, I don't know how to put that, but just being able to set like this ground, like what we did last year is like the base minimum, what we need to do. So like, he's just raising that bar. Yeah, what way did you think that he's trying to build you guys up from that foundation that you had last year to this year? Just being able to, you know, constantly uh, put in our uh, brains that, you know, this is what we're here for, this is what we're doing, you know. Um, if, as long as we have 11 guys ready to do what we got to do, we can do it. Dante, who's, who's the fastest guy in the locker room? I'm going to say myself. Okay. How do you, how do you match up against Roderick? Um, <laughs> like that's, that's what I want to ask you. Like that kid, no. that kid, that kid's fast. Hey, no, I'm, I'm going to stop playing. Uh, Roger Pleasant is fast. Like, he's probably the fastest, i say. Uh, he has real track speed. Like, you know, track speed and football speed are two different speeds. But Roger, he, like, he'll look like he relaxed, but he's moving. Like, he's fast. Is, but. is, is, is that some, but something as a self-described fast guy as yourself? Like, when you get new guys in, do you always kind of, like, scope out? Like, here's what this dude does? Like, Not really. Like, everybody knew who his Rod was. You feel me? He's basically an Olympian when it comes to track. But, um, no, we always just, you know, a friendly little chitter-chat here and there, you know. But 
it's always competition. Like nobody's gonna shy away from competition. No matter if you you saying boy, we gonna still get on you. Do do the football players and the track athletes and like the guys who don't earn point both? Do you guys like interact with those guys at all, or do you guys ever like run into like? Uh, we may like run you guys ever like throw down your books in the middle of campus and just like do oh, it? Oh, no, no, we ain't never did that one, but we'll, we'll see like uh, Makai Williams at uh, breakfast or something, and then we'll be like, hey, whenever you're ready to line it up, we'll line it up. But it's like, you know, that friendly mutual respect, you know, because we know that track is a whole different, like, that's a whole nother mindset right there. Who, who on the track team would be the best uh, for a football, football player? Team, yeah. mm, I'd probably say Makai Williams, yeah. for sure. He's been tweeting about that a lot. Hey, ain't he, ain't he though. Are you trying to but recruit so, him? Like, what's the deal there? Hey, I don't know. He used to play uh, in high school and then had, like, a little, you know, mishap. And then that's when he fully uh, transferred to track. But, yeah, I think he could, he could be a little dog over here for real. Is Tez Johnson in that conversation of the fastest yeah. guys on the team? What's Tez it like trying sure. to cover him? Tez, uh, you got to get a hand on Tez. If you don't <laughs> get a hand on Tez, he'll still be running to this day. So, uh, Tez is real quick, real good speed. He knows how to – use what uh, a DB gives him or doesn't give him. So he's real smart. Dante, this might be a, like a, a dumb question, but how many how many times has this locker room like turned over in your time here? Like you've been here through several coaching staffs, through mm -hmm. several different leaders. Like what's it like being here year three, year four, and just you've had a lot of different teammates, man. Like, like, like how, how's this feel going into this season for you? Uh, it's a little, it's a little weird. Like, you know, my class was, it wasn't a huge class, but uh, it was probably like maybe 20 of us. And now it's probably like four or three or five. But I mean, you still you still know who who's around, you know. Uh, this new coaching staff that we brought, like you said, we even changed coaching staff and stuff like that. This new coaching staff is just like a, a family to us. So the more we keep adding, the more the, the family gets bigger and it's like it gets tighter too, so. You mentioned that you are learning lessons uh, throughout the season. How are you approaching the season personally, considering that it's your senior season and that you are recovering from an injury? Um, I say I'm taking it uh, real serious. Uh, I just feel like um, I have a lot to display, um, a lot that I haven't gotten to display or put on film. So I'm really excited to you know get put in those situations where I have to respond. What are those, some of those things that you haven't been able to put on film? Uh, just being able to showcase my talent, um, being able to you know. Dial in on my technique, play the coverage, you know, guard, and, um, you know, get picky and stuff like that. Uh, separate question. There's been a sh lot of shakeup in the Pac-12. That's mm -hmm. not a secret. Um, has that affected the team at all, like the attitude or how you guys approach games or just non existent You know, it's crazy. Uh, we really didn't even know nothing about that, like, as a team. Like, we didn't know nothing about that until, like, maybe, like, a day ago. And we all found out, like, on our own, or, like, on some news or Twitter or anything like that. But... I mean, we move around as if, you know, nothing ever happened. Like, we don't really care about a lot of talk of movement and this, this, and that. Whoever play, whoever's on that schedule, we play them, so, you know. So there's no worry about, uh, like, maybe you guys might move or get another team or anything like that? No, nah, we, we Oregon, yeah. Thank you. How deep, oh, sorry, okay. you go ahead. Okay. You're a DB, Deion um, Sanders, one of the best of all time. Does that create any excitement for that matchup, like going in there? Uh, what's crazy was when I played in the uh, Under Armour game, uh, Deion Sanders was my coach, actually. Uh, so that's a little crazy. So just being able to see him again, play against him, you know, that's a – who doesn't want that? Like, you know, so, yeah, it's going to be real loud. What's it like playing under him? Playing under who? Coach Prime. Uh, It was – it was uh, a different level of intensity. Like, you know you can't mess up. Like, this is the prime time. This is the Deion Sanders. Like, you just knew you couldn't mess up. So it was it was just a lot of, a, a big chip on your shoulder, for real, if I say that. How are you? Oh, sorry, go ahead. You go ahead again. <laughs> Step on each other's toes. Um, when you look at the quarterbacks in this league, I mean, I think it's probably the best in the country when it comes to a conference. I mean, how do you feel about that when you just look at your opponents and you see – Caleb Williams, Michael Penix, when you look at all those all those challenges? Uh, when I look at all those quarterbacks, uh, I look and then I turn around and I look at the quarterback that I have, Bo Nix. Um, Bo Nix is crazy. Like, put up Madden numbers, like, literally. So, I got faith in my quarterback, you know, 100%. You know, when you look at those, we, we of course, the Pac-12 has great quarterbacks, you know, can't wait to play them. But, you know, we got a great quarterback over here, too. One more question. How important is it for not just you, but for the team to get your hands on the ball, get interceptions, force turnovers? 
Um, that's like the number one goal, the ball, the ball, the ball. Um, that's all we love, that's all we teach, that's all we practice. Uh, go get the ball, you know, even if it's a walkthrough or if, you know, it's just a little drill work, it's always about the ball. Thanks, Dante. For sure, for sure. Appreciate y'all.